chapter 11 of Hebrews. Y'all glad to be here? Yep. Amen. Amen. I surely am too. Amen. All right. Verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. For by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch, when he was translated, that he should not see death, and was not found because God translated him, for before his translation he had his testimony uh, that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's pray before we get started. Kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly in prayer this morning. I come as the preacher this morning praying that you'd be with me as I speak. Recall things to my remembrance that I've studied. Lord, I pray that my speech be plain so folks can understand it. And Lord, I pray that you'd uh, uh, take the message preached and apply it to the hearts of each and every person here. And Lord, as a congregation, Lord, we pray that you would speak to each and every heart here where we have need. Of course, Lord, we pray for that one that needs to be saved, if there be one here like that, that they would put the faith that you've given them in the Lord Jesus Christ, that they could be saved. And Lord, I pray for those of us who are saved, help us to do as the Word of God commands us, to live by faith. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Like I said, we've been preaching on precious things, but I changed it up a little bit. I'm going to title the sermon this morning, How to Get a Good Report Card. I don't know about you, but I always tried to get a good report card. Most of the time, though, I tried too late to get a good report card, so it didn't work out that well for me. Uh, but when it comes to living for the Lord Jesus Christ, when it comes to standing before him one day, I want to have a good report card. I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now, the Bible says over and over again, the just shall live by faith. Now, if we're to live by faith, we really need to know what it is, don't we? And it gives the definition right here in verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is substance, but it's su substance of things that we can't see. It's substance of things hoped for. Now, when we see the word hope in the Bible, it's not used the same manner we use it. I might say uh, today in our today's speech, I hope somebody brings donuts to work on Monday. That means they may or not, may or may not bring donuts. I might say, I hope it don't rain on Saturday. But I don't know whether it's going to rain or not. But when you see the Bible word hope, that means that it's on its way. It's something that's there, it's something that's established in God's word, and it is going to happen. Amen. So a faith is the substance of things that are going to happen. We know they're going to happen. Why? Because God's word says they will. Amen. We have faith in what God said. It has become substance to us. And it's the evidence of things not seen. We can't see these things with our eyes, but we know that since God promised them, they will come to pass. I mean, our eyes pick up light waves that we might see. Ears pick up sound waves that we may hear. But faith looks beyond the senses. And we know that things exist because God said they do. Uh, faith is simply believing God. Right? Do you believe God? Uh, it's, uh, think about the Apostle Paul. There's a great tempest at sea over in the book of Acts in chapter 27. And it, things look very dismal. The ship's being tossed to and fro. Uh, it's so cloudy that there's no stars to be seen in the sky. But Paul gets a word from the Lord. And he says because of this word from the Lord, in Acts chapter 27 verse 25, he said, Wherefore, sirs, speaking to the folks on the ship with him, 
Be of good cheer, for I believe God, and it shall be even as it was told me. He said, I believe God. It's going to happen just like he told me it was going to happen. We are going to spare. Not one person is going to die on this ship because God said so. And isn't that the way we're supposed to live life? God said so. He, well, everything's going to be all right because God said so. Huh? We're going to make it through the storm because God said we will. Amen. We're saved by grace through faith and we're going to heaven when we die because God said so. I believe God and it shall be as he told me. And I should be able to say that every time I read a precious promise in God's word. I believe God. You know, faith is exercised every day, whether you're a believer or not. I mean, it takes faith to walk into a building, doesn't it? I mean, when you walk into a building, you have to have faith in its design. That it won't fall down and crumble all around you and, and kill you. You have to have faith in the builder that they knew what they were doing when they put that building together. You have to have faith in the materials that were used in the building of that building. I mean, after all, above our head are a bunch of rafters. I have to have faith that those rafters were put together well by the ones who constructed them. We're standing on floor joists above a basement. I have to believe and have faith in those floor joists that they're going to hold me up and hold us up. I mean, we could perish if those things uh, weren't made well, but you had enough faith to walk in. You trusted it. Anybody think, I don't know about this building when they walked in? I mean, you have to have faith. You ever, every day you exhibit faith. When you go to the bank, when you get your paycheck, and you put it, give it to the teller, you have faith that that's going to be put in your bank account, don't you? I always check up on them. But uh, this kind of faith is e exercised every day, but it's faith in men. I mean, I could put my money in that little, uh, that little container that they pneumatically shoot over to the teller and, and I could put my money in there and then it not be put to my bank account. Why? Because faith in men will fail you sometimes. The building certainly could fail because men built it. Amen? But faith in God will never fail you. Amen. What God said, He is able also to perform. What God has promised will come to pass. I can promise you that. That's why Peter called it precious faith. Amen. We're saved by faith. You know that? Or through faith, rather. What is that? That's trusting in what the Lord did. I don't think I'm going to heaven because I'm a good man. <clears throat> now, I may consider myself a good man if I measure myself by worse men. But when I measure myself by a holy and righteous God, I am a miserable, miserable man. Right. Amen? And I've utterly come short of the glory of God. But that's where faith comes in. I put my faith, my trust in the one who is able to pay for my sins. The one who is able to keep me from falling and keep me to the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust him. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We're saved through faith. Put in our, our belief, our trust in the one who paid for our sins. You know, faith must be put in the right thing. I mean, I believe all of us have faith, and we all exercise faith, as I already said, but faith must be put in the Lord Jesus Christ when it comes to salvation. I mean, the Muslim uh, puts their faith in the, the Koran and puts their faith in Muhammad, but that's not good enough. Amen? Uh, the, the idolaters uh, put their faith in graven images. The humanist puts faith in himself. The philosopher puts faith in his own ideas. The materialist puts his faith in money and what money can buy. The religious, many of them without Christ, put their faith in their own works. And many today put their faith in government. And I tell you what, that is very misplaced trust right there. But only faith in the Lord Jesus Christ will say, He's the one that will never leave you nor forsake you. 
He is the one who will never let you down. Put your faith and trust in him. All other things will fail. If the object of faith is wrong, there's no salvation. I've heard people say this before. It doesn't matter what you have faith in. You just have to have faith in faith. Well, that's a ridiculous thing to say. It has nothing uh, to do with, with facts. And I tell you what, I believe in facts and I believe the Bible because uh, facts are truth and the word, His Word is truth. Listen to what it says in Acts chapter 4 verse 12. It says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Your faith needs to be put in the man, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's not salvation in any other. Not in your good works, not in any religion. Not in anything, any institution of man. But in Jesus Christ alone. Now it's not only faith that is important. And it's not only important because faith is why we're saved. But also faith is important because it's useful after we're saved. Uh, in verse 2 it says, For by it, talking about faith, the elders received a good report. They got a good report card because they believed God. They trusted God. They put faith in what God said. So they got a good report. And they actually made the list of the heroes of the faith here in chapter 11 because they believed God even when things uh, did not look like they were going to work out. Now, I don't know about you, but I want a good report card when I stand before God. I want to stand before God, and I want, him to, hear, I want to hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Now, the phrase, The just shall live by faith, is mentioned over and over again in the Word of God. So after we're saved, we're to live by faith every single day. Now let's look at some people who live by faith recorded here in Hebrews chapter 11. Now notice as we look at these heroes of the faith, faith is always full of action. Faith is not just some sitting around with wishful thinking. Faith is something that is put into action every single time when it's good faith. Now let's look at the first thing here in verse 4. It says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. By faith, he offered a more excellent sacrifice. Now, if you'll read the book of Genesis, you'll see uh, that uh, Adam and Eve's two sons both brought different sacrifices. One brought the fruit of the ground, the fruit of his own hands, the fruit of his own labors. Cain was a tiller of the ground, so he, he broke the ground open, he planted the seed, he watered it, he took care of it. It was his work. By the way, uh, his work was made out of a cursed ground. God had done cursed the ground. But he brought forth this abundance and he offered it to God. God said, I can't accept that. Then God said, if you'll do well, if you'll do it right, I'll accept it. What was it God was looking for there? God was looking for a blood sacrifice. Abel knew this. That blood sacrifice, that animal that would be slain would represent the Savior who would come, the Lamb of God who would shed His blood for the sins of all mankind, of all generations. That blood sacrifice that Abel offered represented that sacrifice Christ would make. And it was made in faith that God would come and be the ultimate sacrifice. But Cain's was made in pride. Cain's was made uh, uh, in a way that God was not pleased. So what is it we should learn from that? Well, what we learn from it is this. We need to have faith in God's way. Amen. It's not what you think you ought to do. It's not being prideful and say, I'm going to do this for God and then God's going to save me. I'm going to offer to Him uh, my best. Well, your best is not good enough. You've got to come God's way. Put faith in His way. And the only way there's remission for sin, according to the Bible, is by the shedding of blood. By the shedding, without the shedding of blood, the Scriptures say, there is no remission. Amen. Y'all with me this morning? 
Have faith in his way. Don't have faith in your way. Don't have faith in the way that your mom and daddy did it or your grandparents or what the Baptists do. Have faith in what thus saith the Lord is. And what thus saith the Lord is this. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Amen. Yes. So by faith he offered a more excellent sacrifice. He believed God. You say, where did he learn that? Well, the Bible don't tell us everything that God said. If the Bible told us everything that God uh, said, uh, the world could not contain the books. I do know this, that once Adam and Eve were out of the garden, God uh, killed an animal and made them coats of skins for a covering. The word covering is the same word as atonement. Made a covering. An animal died. Why an animal? Well, uh, an animal is innocent. Its blood is shed, picturing the innocent Lamb of God who was without sin, who had shed blood for all of mankind. All right. Not only uh, does faith, uh, do we see the, uh, the way of faith, we all see the witness of faith here. Uh, the witness of faith, it says, by which he, Abel, all, or obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, that being by it being dead yet speaketh. There's a witness left behind of Abel's faith. This witness uh, tells us something. What is the witness that's left behind? Well, the witness is this. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Abel's faith echoes throughout all the centuries telling us uh, that only through the blood of the one who would come can we be saved. Put faith in that and faith in that alone. And I say salvation uh, does not only come through faith, but we are to live by faith. I tell it, we're to know every single day that we're all right and be uh, secure in our faith by knowing that it's all covered by the blood. What about the walk of faith? Well, we see that uh, right here in the scriptures. It says uh, in verse 5, By faith Enoch, when he was, tran was translated, that he should not see death, and was not found because God translated him. Uh, for before his translation, he had the testimony that he pleased God. Do you see that? He walked by faith. I mean, he was already saved by faith, but then he walked by faith. You say, how do we know he walked by faith? Well, the Bible says he walked with God. I like that. I mean, if you consider uh, uh, Enoch's day, it was the days of Noah. And the days of Noah are very notorious times. It was a time of material prosperity. They had a lot of things, kind of like today. But it was a time of moral depravity. Men's hearts were upon evil continually, it says in the book of Genesis of Noah and Enoch's day. Kind of like today also, right? And it was a time of monumental apostasy. I mean, it hadn't been uh, too long since God made Adam and Eve. I mean, they should have certainly had God in their memories and in their thoughts at that time. But no, they started to lift up themselves. Huh? They started to try to make a name for themselves. It was a time of monumental apostasy. So it's a terrible time. It's morally bankrupt time. Uh, there's a great apostasy. But Enoch decided he would still walk with God no matter what everybody else was doing. He walked by faith. Maybe they ridiculed him and said, you don't need to do that no more. We're far removed from creation. God has done left man. Why do you want to walk with him? He said, I'm going to walk by faith with him. Every day Enoch walked with God. I like that. That was his testimony. Let me ask you something. What's your testimony? What are you all about? I tell what you all to be about is walking with God, walking by faith. I mean, when, he, when he's walking with God, he's walking by faith. He can't see God. I've never seen God. The Bible says no man has seen God at any time. Huh? Maybe he's walking. I don't really know how this happened. But maybe he's walking along. And I always think of a beach. So I'm thinking him there by the Mediterranean Sea perhaps. Talking to God. 
Of course, the geography all changed during the flood anyway. But I can see him talking to God and maybe uh, moving it, just talking out loud. Everybody said, that guy's crazy. Who's he talking to? Huh? That crazy old guy, he's still clinging to them old ways. He's clinging to God and, and his religion and to those weapons. Who is that guy? But i tell you who he was. He was a guy that pleased God. Why? Because he walked by faith. Every day of his life, I'm sure, he walked by faith. And it says that God took him. He was translated. I believe that God caught him on up into heaven straightway. Oh, Maze Jackson, I believe, is who used to originally say this. He said, they was walking and talking there along the way. And God finally said, well, we're closer to my house than yours. Why don't you just come on home with me? Maybe that's the way it happened. But I do know this. He pleased God by faith. Uh, we see the work of faith there in verse 7. It says, uh, By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen, as yet moved with fear, preparing an ark for the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. He believed God, so he prepared an ark. God said to Noah, I'm going to destroy the world. And you know what Noah did? He said, I believe you. I've got faith in what you said. Now, Noah had never seen rain before, and neither did anybody else in that day. Rain had never fallen from the sky. But Noah said, God said it, and I believe it. Amen. He had never seen the fountains of the deep uh, opened up and the waters uh, come uh, from the ground or the windows of the heavens opened up so the rains would pour down. But he said, God said it and I believe it. You know, I've seen a, a bumper sticker before that says, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. God said it and that settles it, friends. When it comes to salvation, God said it and that settles it. It's only through Jesus Christ. He prepared an ark. I like that. He got to work. He believed God, so he got to work. Isn't that something Christians today should do? I mean, believe God and get to work. I mean, if there really is a hell beneath our feet burning with everlasting fires, we ought to believe God in that because He said it, and we ought to get to work to see that souls are kept from that place by being saved. And us being a witness. If we have God said He's coming back for us, we ought to believe that and get to work until Jesus comes. Get to work. There's no better work in all the world than the work of the New Testament church. I mean, all other work uh, will uh, one day uh, be moot. But what's done for Christ will last forever and ever and ever. A soul that is saved is saved uh, forever, friend. And it goes on to say, He condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Now, talking about salvation again. You can't get into heaven unless you're perfect. Right? Well, you can't get there by your own, own righteousness then because our righteousness is our filthy rags. But true righteousness, it says right here, comes by faith. When you put faith in God, your righteousness, is, is your filthy rags are all clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. And by the way, anyways, uh, your righteousness is His righteousness after you're saved. Amen. But I think about Noah. I think about the last appeal. Now, the Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. I wish we had more in the Bible about Noah. But he was a preacher. So he was preaching. What was he preaching about, you think? Huh? He was a preacher of righteousness. And how does righteousness come? According to Hebrews right here, talking about Noah, by faith. He's preaching you need to have faith in God. You need to believe God. Perhaps, he said, God told me he's going to judge the world. He's going to destroy it. And the only way you can be saved is to go inside of this one door on this ark that's being prepared. But they wouldn't put faith in that. 
They put faith rather in the fact that they thought that they'd just continue to do what they was doing and be all right. But Noah made one last appeal to them to come to the ark, but they, they didn't come. And the Bible says the door was shut. God shut the door, not only sealing in Noah and his family, but sealing out the world that rejected God. And that's what it says here. When he prepared the ark, he condemned the world, because when he went in, they were condemned. There was no hope for them then. I think about this too as he, I don't know how all this transpired. I mean, I don't know how the animals got there. I mean, maybe uh, the, the, with the Lord's help they got the ark done and Noah and his sons went and, and daughters-in-law and wife all went out looking for animals. I tend to think that God brought the animals to Noah. I mean, animals obey God. Men don't obey God, but animals do. You can see that in the scriptures too. But anyways, he persevered. He got all the animals on. He didn't quit till the work was done. Why? Because he had faith in God. Amen. A man who had faith in God doesn't quit. A man who has faith in God just keeps on going and perseveres even in the most difficult times. Even with the impending threat of the clouds rolling in, they have faith in God. But everything's going to be all right. And then the last act of him getting on the ark, he believed God. Then we see here the willingness of faith. Verse 8, it said, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whether he went. His faith caused him to obey. Just as Noah's faith caused him to prepare an ark, just as uh, uh, Abel's faith caused him to offer a more excellent sacrifice. See the action there with faith? He went when he was called. He went out. He'd never seen a promised land just like Noah had never seen the rain. But he believed God and he went. Amen. Now this faith cost him and faith will cost you. I mean, the benefits of faith far excel any cost, but it does cost you something. I mean, some of your old friends might not want to be around a person of faith, huh? Right. But I tell you what, they weren't real friends if they feel that way. Yep. I mean, a real friend wants what's best for you. Right. And what's best for anybody is to walk in faith. Amen. It'll cost you time. Huh? It may even cost you some money, but it's always well worth it, folks. But Abraham believed God and he went to a place he hadn't seen. He left his home. He left his family. He had to live in tents instead of living in a house. He had to leave all of his furniture behind. But in faith he stepped forth. And I tell you what, now he is rewarded as he was a man great in faith. And his, his faith is recorded here in God's word that's forever settled in heaven as a testimony of him being faithful to God. Wouldn't you want something like that? Amen. So he was faithful. And not only that, he was faith, his faith was exercised in waiting. Now, when we think of waiting, we think about not doing anything, right? But no, when you see waiting in the Bible, waiting is a very expective thing. When you're waiting on the Lord, you're not just idly sitting. No, you're expecting something. Uh, when uh, the, the, the 120 were told to go and wait for the promise of the Father, they weren't told to go and sit and twiddle their thumbs. No, they were expecting the promise of the Father to come. They were expecting the Holy Ghost to come. And while they were waiting, they weren't sitting idle. They were praying. They were in one accord. They were doing the things they knew that they were supposed to do. That's walking by faith. That's living by faith. Doing those things in the meantime, waiting on God, doing those things you know you ought to do. Listen to what it says in verse 9. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles, that's tents, with Isaac and Jacob and the heirs uh, with him of the same promise. 
They were waiting. They were expecting. Uh, what was he expecting? Well, verse 10 says, He looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. He didn't see the city with his eyes, but he was looking for it. Why? Because God said he'd have it one day. Amen. And that was good enough for him. He's waiting for a city. It says he was dwelling in tents. But he's looking for a city. Amen. He was waiting for a child. And you can read about that in verse 11. It says, Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Amen. I mean, they went a long time without having a child, but God promised Abraham long ago he'd have a child. He'd already stepped out by faith and left everything that he knew and he's waiting on a child and he waits until he's 100 years old. Sarah's 90 years old and finally they have a child. Sarah, when she first heard she was going to have a, a child in her old age, she laughed, lied about it, said, I didn't laugh. But, you know, wouldn't you laugh too? I mean, that's kind of a, a crazy thing, isn't it? But God is able to perform everything that He promises. In faith, we worship. In verse 21 it says, By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both sons of Joseph and worship, leaning upon his staff. Jacob, leaning on his staff, worshiped. Why? Because the one he had faith in had, been, had fulfilled all the promises that he had promised them. And the ones he hadn't seen fulfilled, he was still waiting on them because they would be accomplished. So in his old age, he leaned upon his staff of wood. Well, I'll tell you this right now. You can lean upon the promises of God by faith. Just like he leaned upon his staff of wood. He passed it on to his children, according to the scripture. This faith, he passed it on. Look at verse 22. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the parting of the children of Israel. They hadn't departed Egypt yet, but he said there's going to be a time when we leave Egypt as a nation. God has promised us the promised land, and we will go into that land, that land that flows with milk and honey. You may not be able to see it here in Egypt, but we're going. And he said, when you go, I want you to dig my bones up or get them out of the tomb wherever they are and I want you to carry them there in the promised land so I can be buried there. That's faith, isn't it? Amen. He didn't say we're comfortable here in this, this place. Let's stay here. No, he said God's promised us something better. And I'll tell you, this God's promised us something better, Christian. Right. Amen? Yeah. We, got, we also seek a city which is to come. Our best will be the last part. I can tell you right now, things are good in Christ Jesus presently, but we got better things to come, folks. We got a better rest. Amen? <laughs> he also, by faith, he, there was some withstanding done. Moses withstood because of faith. And I tell you what, I could go on about this, but I'm going to hasten on. Look what it says in verse 23. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandments. The king's commandment was that male children were to be thrown into the river. They were to be killed. There's too many Hebrews in the land, so let's get rid of some of them. Sounds like abortion today, by the way. Amen? Amen. Just as evil. Amen? Amen? And used in many of the same way. But anyways, uh, Jocko Bed withstood the king's commandment in faith. I can't imagine this. A mother, and you know the mother's love, but a mother taking her baby and putting it in a little handmade a boat made out of bulrushes and selling it down the Nile River. But she knew uh, when she took that baby out of her own arms, little baby Moses, and put it in the ark of bulrushes, that she was really putting it in the hands of God. Amen. By faith. By faith she prepared that little ark as Noah had prepared that mighty ark. When that mighty ark saved the whole family, that little ark of bulrushes saved that little bitty baby who God would use to save a nation. Why? Because she had faith. It says there in verse 27, 
That faith is seeing him which is invisible. It's the evidence of things not seen. I cannot touch God. I've not handled Him. I've not seen Him with my eyes. But I know He is here with me. Because He said He'd never leave me nor forsake thee. Amen. Amen. The Israelites, when they passed through the Red Sea in verse 29, exercised that faith when they stepped into that curtain of walled water. I couldn't imagine that water piled up on both sides. I mean, what's holding that water up? People today, they'd have walked up and looked at it and said, I don't know about this. Just out and slapped it on the side. Is this going to hold up until we get to the other side? Huh? It did, didn't it? Why? Because God made a way. Yeah. And when God makes a way, that way will not fail. Right. It will not fail when He made a way of salvation. And He will not fail to see you through uh, uh, the things of this daily life. The walls of Jericho fell down flat after they were compassed about the seven days, according to verse 30. Why? Because God said they would if they marched around that city six times and on the seventh day, seven times, blew the horns and shouted. And what happened? They fell down flat, just like God said. Amen. By faith, these things were possible. And I'll tell you this right now. We serve the same God these folks did. We serve the same one. He'll save you by faith. He'll keep you by faith. And exercise that faith every day. Believe in what God has said. And I'll tell you this. You'll have a good report card when you stand before Him. Examine yourselves as we pray.